Well, hello there. This is my last Patreon exclusive that I'm turning into a regular YouTube video because I'm out of Patreon exclusives except for shorts. But if you're interested in uh, joining my Patreon, I do offer early access. As a matter of fact, I have access to a video now that won't be up for like three days. So um, you should go uh, do that if that's the kind of thing you're interested in. Um, anyway, enjoy the video. Now, for those of you who own a copy of Heaven's Mirror, you'll no doubt remember that this is like right at the beginning of the body of the text. It's like this smacks you right in the face and the angle that Santa take the photograph at makes it really, really look like a dang skyscraper, man. There's, it, 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 it's impressive. Um, it definitely makes an impact right out the gate. It's one of the stellae at Axum, and it's meant to mark the grave of one of the kings of the Axum people who lived in Ethiopia around for around 500, 800 years back in the early uh, AD era. Like 1700 years ago is when the stella is supposed to have been placed, right? Now it's an obelisk, so it's almost certainly inspired by the Egyptians that are nearby, a lot like the Ethiopian pyramids from eras before, which a lot of you are probably aware of. But these differ that they're carved to look like buildings as opposed to the regular Egyptian obelisks that just would bear hieroglyphs and whatnot. It's got a door in the front and the back, and then windows all the way around going up all the sides. The windows do, not the doors. Um, and it, it looks like a dang skyscraper to anybody with a modern set of eyes. There's really no questioning it. And it came out of the pre-Islamic period in Ethiopia and in that part of the world. So the, um, the religious practices and knowledge, we don't have a whole lot of it because those monotheistic religions tended to just kind of like get rid of as much of that crap as they possibly could, and this is one more example of that. We don't know a whole lot about the pre-Islamic religions, but we know a little bit, and, and we might be able to glean a little from it. Perhaps you know the story of Jacob's Ladder, and no, I don't mean the movie with Tim Robbins or the remake I'm not even going to bother to see, but I'm talking about the biblical story about Jacob having a dream and seeing a ladder where angels go up and down to heaven. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, blah, 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 blah. And then, of course, there's also the story of the Tower of Babel. Now, the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people move eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build for ourselves a city with the tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may take a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we'll be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it is called Babel, because the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. He seems like a nice guy. Ziggurats were also said to have been built to reach the heavens and maybe even have inspired the story of the Tower of Babel. And so basically the concept of getting up to the heavens through climbing isn't novel to the region. That's like basically it. You want to get there, you got to climb. That's the idea that they seem to have had. And that does make symbolic sense. And the largest of these obelisks really are massive. I mean, it was like 520 tons. And when it fell, it just busted the mortuary in the area all to hell. I'm, I'm sure some of the workers lost their lives or limbs or something over this because it was, it was quite honestly a disaster it looks like but my point is is that they were so concerned with getting these things as far up to the heavens as possible that they would make them unmanageable as we see here now the Axum people were very powerful from about 8300 to 600 and they conquered a lot of areas collected a lot of tribute and presumably would be impressed by a lot of like the religious things and architectural projects in the region that would only stand to reason it can be frustrating trying to discern this because both Christianity and Islam took over the region and in that sense everything that we see that's recorded is either recorded through their lens or it's really really piecemeal not a whole lot survives. Now one of the windows that we do have into the pre-Islamic beliefs in that region is the poets of that era. A lot of them for the tribes that they were in were considered to have kind of a shamanistic role kind of a divinatory role and their poems really as such dealt with like heavy themes of life death and most importantly for us here, the afterlife. 
We can also assume the Egyptian influence is strong. Not only did the obelisks come from there, but like I mentioned earlier, the Ethiopian pyramids come from there, and it seems like some of their religious beliefs are also intertwined with this. And that tradition seems to have continued all the way up until Christian times, although the record is pretty spotty in places. Now, when the pre-Islamic's poetry spoke of the afterlife, it was frequently associated with birds. Owls frequently were guides or sacrificial offerings to help the souls departed, and one of the beliefs was that the soul could escape through a wound in the body that was a mortal wound and turn into a bird and fly around, not quite making it to heaven, but getting caught somewhere in between on its attempt to make it to heaven. So you can kind of see that same kind of thought process here of like climbing your way to heaven, but maybe not making it in some cases. And also a lot like the Egyptians, they were frequently provided with goods to help them in the afterlife. For these nomadic people, camels were extremely important. And so a camel was something that was frequently either interred with the body or tied into a stake nearby the body. Now, if you look closely at this skyscraper, you'll notice that windows and doors aren't the only things that we see being emulated here. There's also logs, cross-section logs in each floor. Something we're not going to notice because we don't put logs in our homes anymore. But basically the point is, is that these were models of the homes of the time just stacked on top of each other, a multi-tier floor. Now my guess, just like a bird or a ziggurat or a ladder, this is something they were supposed to use to ascend to heaven with. And assuming they had this ancient Egyptian mythology mingled in there, the idea of them getting stuck or lost somewhere along the way isn't crazy. So if they're climbing up and... You know, they get three quarters of the way up there. It'd at least be nice to have a room to sleep in, right? So they make rooms all the way up. That's that's my assumption there. I, I could be wrong, but it seems to me that that makes the most sense as to why they would build dwellings on each individual floor the whole way up. So I guess you could consider it less of a skyscraper and more of a multi-tier ladder system that's intended to also serve as a backup purgatory. Also, you're probably aware of the concept of the Axis Mundi. You're like the navel of the world and... The, the idea of these was frequently not only to grab the sky and the ground and tie them together, but also the underworld. So putting something to be an axis mundi on top of your king's body would make a lot of sense. Unite the underworld, ground, and sky. Well, that's a, a nice little way for him to shoot on up to heaven, right? Now, obviously, I don't know the religious beliefs any more than anyone else does, but this does make a lot of sense to me. I mean, this thing looks uncannily like a skyscraper. There really is no getting around that. So... A lot like the Kimbaya artifacts, it kind of does just like beg for some sort of explanation when you look at it. It's like, really, how does this end up looking the way it does? But if you take the time to look at it and you investigate a little bit, it doesn't take a real long time to find a more reasonable explanation that in all honesty is still really interesting, but it doesn't, you know, skyscrapers require like that industrial strength steel. I mean, even Hancock's civilizations aren't supposed to come up with stuff like that. I mean, he, he posits that they take te took technology down a different path. So, I mean, it, this is the kind of thing, an ancient skyscraper is really getting into the realm of, of highly improbable. But this, this makes a lot of sense. Well, thanks so much for watching and a special thanks to my patrons, both for uh, supporting me and for being chill about me doing this is actually your guys' idea to go ahead and re start releasing these videos and, and offer early access instead. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty good idea because th the one of you that, that mentioned it, it was really great, great point that uh, you know if I make something really good and it's, it's a banger and then I just put it on Patreon, well, it doesn't really take off. But if it's on, if it's a banger and it goes on regular YouTube, well, then it, then it'll bang. So, so bang the buttons down below and thank you all very much, and we will see you next time.